Hi again, so here's another book that I just recently finished reading. It is called The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, published in 2019. Now, for starters, I really enjoyed this book. This is, this is quite different and again, another masterpiece, I believe, from Ogawa. Um, I have to say that this book has been lauded as one of the best books of 2019. And really, honestly, I, I believe it. I read it and I'm, I'm convinced. Um, it's, about, uh, it's about an unnamed island somewhere in, in Japan, wherein mysteriously and for whatever reason, randomly, objects disappear, as in literally disappear. And once an object disappears, everything about it disappears as well, meaning to say all the memories of the inhabitants of the island disappear. So for example, for example, this book itself. When, for, one, for example, in one day, all the books, you just wake up and all the books in the island would be gone. They would disappear. And as time goes by, like give it three days or so, the memories of the people in the island about the book would slowly but surely, you know, fade away. They would kind of remember something. It's just, you know, it's a faint um, memory of something, but they cannot understand what it is. And they don't have an emotion attached to it anymore either. Now, there are a few individuals in the island, though, who seem to be immune to, to, this, to these disappearances. And that's when the memory police comes in because the memory police hunts down these people who have their memories intact. Um, they, they are against the norm, right? And they have to be put away. Of course, these people who have their memories intact essentially are your, your folks who fight against this big institution who is basically oppressing them, right? So there you go. That's the base story. That's the baseline of it. And I guess by now you know uh, what's it about, right? That's the deeper side of the book. That's the deeper message of the book. In one, you know, in, 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 at the outset, you would think it's a sci-fi genre. And I guess in some cases it is. But honestly, I feel like it's a bit more than that. It is much more than a sci-fi genre. It's really about, it's a meta metaphor for oppression and authoritarianism and, and, and all that. And you have certain important key takeaways. I had key takeaways from this book. Um, for me, it's a message that it is important to remember. It is important to remember even the things you feel like are not so important. And it is important to pass on stories about ourselves, about your history, about your family, about your humanity. Because that's how you continue to live on and that's how your gener uh, generations after generations will continue to live on, right? And that's where your identity can be rooted on as well. But more than that, the other key takeaway for me was it may not be the most easiest thing or the easiest thing to do, but there is importance in fighting for who you are, for your identity, for your memories. All opinions count. Um, all people's thoughts matter. Um, nobody should be dictating what you, you think to be right. Nobody should be dictating what you think um, your life should be led. Uh, it's, it's about those messages. These are profound, deep, timeless messages. And I guess that's, that's one of the things that really um, fascinated me about the book, right? I mean, the author Ogawa really has this distinct style and voice of relaying her her message and her story and and these are such deep timeless topics right oppression and the the importance of speaking out voicing out and protecting the few who do not have the voice and so on and so forth these are you know deep subjects that happen until this day but in this in this book the author managed to write such a tender and gentle story of such a serious and heavy topic and i think that's where the the brilliance of it came through um and this is the second book that i've read uh of of yoko ogawa the first one was the 
Housekeeper and the Professor, and that one was that one was really good as well. Maybe next time I'll do a review of that. Um, so just to, and I guess just to close, um, I would recommend for you to read this book if you're in that you know if you're in that type of mood, if you're in the mood for a little introspection, if you're in the mood for a little. Uh, something a little heavier, I mean heavier topic to read, but at the same time technically easy to read. Um, this book will definitely make you think, make you kind of examine yourself, your opinion, and kind of will challenge you on on what would you do if you were in this situation, if you were in that unnamed island where suddenly your memories of important things about yourself, about your family would just disappear. What would you do? right? How would you react? How would you even fight it? And so on. So I think it's a very good read. Definitely um, agree. I definitely agree that it's, you know, one of the best books in, in, in 2019. Um, so yeah, so if you're in the mood for that, do give it a try. The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. <laughs>